saw that this was a was just a falsity. They, it saw that it wasn't going to happen, and it took advantage of Ukraine. And it, and and not to mention the United States goaded the Russian Russia into it. It did everything it could to get Russia involved in uh, this war. Sorry, lost sixes. May I just like ask you? Do you really think that it just started in like two? thousand in the two thousands because it hasn't been going on it, like that? it's been happening Who's before that? history yes yes if you look at georgia before they that? looked for nato russia took 20 percent of their land no but what you said that someone it, has been edging on russia the states were and like ukrainians oh my god they've been manip no like the russian people have been trying to so, wait what, what? no what no russia has what? been no. violating all no. of their neighboring countries right Regardless of do you, oh, oh, you're you're in for a wild ride because I actually will. Uh, first of all, the link. Um, if you Google Minsk Agreement PDF, the first website that pops up is peacemaker.un.org. Sites, files. Take a look at that. Um, after that, the Russification and the notion that the ukrainian language is something less that's the language of the scums that's the people like who don't have education and league bs you, which hold on let's stick on point here let's stick on talk let's stick on topic because what you're you're talking about is different i'm not i listen I am you're not saying that it started in 2000 and is somehow um i never said it started on then. russia no i did not i never said it started then no he I love is saying said. that u.s promised support to Ukraine and then pulled back and watched uh, Ukraine and Russia fight each other. This has been going on before the states were like even involved in any way. I'm not yes, the same with Georgia. Before. Georgia, U.S. never promised Georgia any aid, but Russia took 20% of their land. After that happened, Georgia started actively asking for, please, where can I join, join NATO? Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying that the that in this particular case, this is not this is this is uh, it's an apples to orange comparison because Georgia is a very different situation than Ukraine. Um, there's much more strategic benefit from Ukraine than there is from Georgia. Georgia was more of like a, uh, uh, you know what, we're there's some issues on our border and we don't like it and we're just going to go ahead and settle them and take this coastline. Russia is very infatuated with coastline. I mean, you can look at it throughout uh, throughout a lot of different places. Russia is very infatuated with coastline because it does not have enough warm water ports. Um, so what, what did you say to Google, by the way, this is not? You said Minsk agreements. So there was something about, sorry. Uh, Minsk agreements PDF um, and she yeah. was also talking about the specific like link but I don't really remember what it was yeah so yeah, uh, yeah I, no, I've actually read this when I check Ukraine this history is... it's just like non-stop abuse from Russia yeah uh, well Ukrainian history Ukraine as a you know as a state we've always been attacked by Russia and it's not just the eight years thing uh, you can also take a look at a uh, tuzla conflict same yeah so it was way before nato and stuff um but you know i feel like maybe i'm wrong i have no idea but i feel like this particular war maybe could be um prevented probably yes. you know and absolutely that's my point. And I'm not justifying Russia in any way. I know the Ukrainian history very well. And I know what we've been through. I know about all the genocides Russia caused to my country. And, you know, my grandma, my great grandma, like on both sides of my parents, they lived through this. They were in the USSR. And, you know, my great, great grandfather, he fought for um in the first world war and stuff so I, I know what that was but i think that this war that we're having right now it in some way i think that it could be prevented you know and we could just it, avoid it could have easily been prevented if the united states would have, would have pushed to have nato 
except Ukraine in 2008, back when it originally made that promise, then this wouldn't have happened. Uh, but it wasn't, and it was always, it was always, Ukraine was always used as a as a pawn, and that's what pisses me off, is because all of it could have been prevented if it would have been accepted into the EU, if it would have been, I mean, we can just go down the line of, of items, of, of things that could have made things differently. Um, you no, know, I, but they didn't I want to. With you. I feel like they would have been in EU, they would have been in NATO, if not for Russia. The same thing happened with Finland. People keep bringing up Russia all the time when Finland is looking to apply. Same thing. The reason why Georgia is not able to join NATO or any other group is because of Russia. Russia really. But I also in. feel like I also feel like it all could be prevented if um, more powerful states just took some action. Because we've already seen uh, we've already seen Chechnya, we've already seen Moldova. We've already seen Finland. We've already seen Georgia, Ukraine in 2014, Ukraine in 2003. And, you know, we've all seen that. We've, we've seen Russia in Syria and Russia in Libya. And nobody really, like, people did nothing. And it really upsets me because there are so many conflicts that can be prevented. But, you know, I'm not really strong at politics, but I feel like... It could all be well, I mean, no, I think you're, you're, no, I think your your points are very valid, and, and and you can say that, but you can't say that um, uh, uh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, these are countries that Russia, you know, uh, at any point in time could have pursued, but they before before anything, the NATO would accepted them, and so that there wouldn't be a point in time where it became an issue. And so I, I just don't I don't believe that it's because of Russia. I, no, not at all. And I never have believed that because the United States, especially after the Soviet Union collapsed, could have just like with Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Poland, Romania, or Romeria, Bulgaria, Romania, all of these countries uh, uh, um, immediately, almost after the USSR collapsed, immediately were added to NATO, and. What Ukraine? What um, Ukraine wasn't good enough. Ukraine has obviously one of the toughest militaries in the world. Now we can we can see it in action. Like what? At what point uh, did we did we decide? Oh, we shouldn't do this. You know, I think that it was decided a long time ago that that Ukraine would be used as a proxy war state, and that's 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 a, a sad point. And then and then the last thing I'll say on that is I'm I'm very concerned. I'm so sorry. In my mind, I'm so so sorry to interrupt you, but I just see the guy spreading the huge uh, propaganda in the comments. So there's a documentary called Ukraine on Fire, and this is a complete bullshit propaganda. Um, the people that were interviewed there were Putin and all the pro-Russian politics, no other opinion you can take a look at the real I, documentary that's called Winter on Fire, uh, which shows the real thing that happened during 2014. So, you know, just, well, just for y'all to... I love both of those documentaries, and both of them are propaganda. Um, yeah, kind of, but, you know, I mean, they're, there are a lot they're of... They're both even though absolute there are propaganda. A lot of, there, are a lot of, <laughs> there are a lot of interesting things in Ukraine on Fire, but the fact that they push this narrative that we've always been the one, the one people with Russia, it just makes me go crazy. That's complete bullshit. Please, please, I would really like to chip in on this right now, and I would like to bring to your attention.